Get ready to embrace debate. First take starts now. San Antonio, congratulations on your fifth title. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Congratulations. Congratulations. You deserve this. Congratulations. First of all, I, I, can't, I know you can't hear us, but the crowd is excited. I know you've been up all night. We appreciate you coming out. It means everything to us. I'm Carrie Champion, the host and moderator, and welcome to First Take. This is Stephen A. Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Funny. We appreciate your humor. Let's give it up uh, for your mayor, Mr. Skip Bayless. Okay, so let's get the show started. Thank you so much. We get it. Uh, Mr. Mayor, speak to your people. Spurs fans. Yeah. And I do love every last one of you. I must begin by apologizing to all of you today because I blew it. E even I underestimated just how dominant the San Antonio Spurs are. I, I said, and I tweeted since December, Spurs in six. Hmm. And I was very happily wrong last night. Spurs in five! 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 Thank you, thank you. Forgive me, I'm a little manic today because I haven't been to bed either. But I, I don't need to remind you that your Spurs just dominated the Miami Heat the way no final opponent has ever been dominated. They won by the widest margin of victory combined ever. By 70 points, they beat the Heat. And I just, before I hand the floor over to my esteemed partner, Stephen A., I just want to thank the San Antonio Spurs for being the best basketball team I have ever seen. Ever seen. This team, this team, no diva egos, no locker room drama, no, no who's going to get the most shots tonight. In fact, all you need to know about my San Antonio Spurs, the MVP of the finals is the one guy they had to push to shoot the basketball. Are you kidding me? Thank you, Kawhi Leonard, for outplaying LeBron James in game 24. And thank you, thank you, thank you. This is crazy out here. Hang on just a second. Take your time. Take your time. I want to thank Tim Duncan for playing some of the greatest basketball of his career at age 38. Yeah. I, I want to thank Manu Ginobili <laughs> for last night making the two huge shots that stopped the bleeding at 22 to 6, and then then for posterizing Chris Bosh and following it up with that three that broke the game over. That, that was the end of it right there. I want to thank Patty Mills for making so many huge shots all year, yeah. including those four three-pointers in the third quarter. And finally, last but not least, I want to thank my partner, Stephen A. Smith, oh. for not picking my San Antonio <laughs> The floor is yours. Oh, my. Well, obviously, I'm in enemy territory, and that's uh -huh. fine. Uh -huh. That's fine. Uh -huh. um, in, 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 all, in, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, 
I've been covering the NBA now for 18 years. And you're never happy about losing. You're certainly not happy about having your pick wrong. But you have to be humble enough to concede defeat. The fact of the matter is, is that it was no fluke. The best team stands here today as the NBA champion. It's just that simple. Um, <clears throat> when you look at the San Antonio Spurs, I've been saying all year long, they were a better team and a deeper team. But come NBA Finals, I believe that it was evenly matched enough where it would have come down to one game. And over the course of 48 minutes, if you have an evenly matched contest, I'm rolling with the best player in the world. The San Antonio Spurs said, we ain't letting it get to that point. We're going to handle this. And, and boy, did they do it. They did not beat the Miami Heat. They beat them down. They stumped them. And, and I got to give the Miami Heat a lot of credit because after the game, whether it was in front of the podium or behind the scenes, they sat up there and they said, we lost to a better team. They whipped our butts. They were just better in every facet. Mm -hmm. Their movement of the basketball, their perimeter shooting, their inside game, their depth, their coaching, whatever it was, when it is rare that you see a team win in practically every category imaginable that's relevant to the game of basketball. Yeah. But they did it, whether it was points in the paint, whether it was fast break points, whether it was rebounding, whether it was perimeter shooting, whatever the case may be, whatever San Antonio needed to do, they did it. And if you were the Miami Heat, you literally got to the point where you were feeling sorry for them because you were wondering where they were going to get hit next. One minute it's Kawhi Leonard. Another minute it's Manu Ginobili. Another minute it's Tim Duncan. Another minute it's, it's Kawhi Leonard. Another minute it's Patty Mills. And then to close the deal, Tony Parker took yeah. over late in the game. You just watched and you just said, damn, there's nothing they can do. There's literally nothing that they could do. And to me, that's what you saw on the face of LeBron James. That's what you saw on the face of Dwayne Wade. There's nothing that we can do. And I think that when you look at it, you got to sit there and think about it. NBA is a game of stars. Sure. We love the stars. But when you see the kind of team basketball that took place, all of those individual superstars basically have been put on notice by the San Antonio Spurs. The league doesn't need you nearly as much as you think we do if you're not going to come in here ready to play basketball the right way because the San Antonio Spurs proved to you what you can do when you're willing to play the right way. I tip my cap to them. The best team in the NBA stands as NBA. Well said, sir. Well said, sir. I appreciate you saying that. And just to to underline just how dominant this finals was for the Spurs, remember after game two, I sat in this very seat and I had to apologize to Ernestine because I got so upset yes, the night before. We remember. It was because I couldn't recognize my Spurs down the stretch. Okay. They should have won game two. They, should, they had it right there. So, so again, and maybe I'm being prisoner of the moment. I'm being manic here. But, but in the big picture, they, they should have won four straight games as opposed to in five. Well, yeah. well, I, just, I, just, I just agree there. I don't agree with that. But what I will tell you is this. I don't think you're truly appreciating the Spurs from this perspective. What I saw from the Spurs over the last three games, Miami could have won games one and two and mm. still lost this series. Okay. That's how dominant That's the Spurs fair. were He's over the last three games. He's not a prisoner of the moment. He's not yeah. a That's how the dominant moment. they were over the last yeah. three. If the Spurs had lost games one and two and still looked the way they looked in games three and four, yeah. they would have won last night, and then they would have went back to Miami yeah. and won in game six. That's how dominant they were over the last three games. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I forgot to remind you, uh, a member of your championship winning team will join the show. Danny Green will be here. Danny Green at the desk. You don't want to miss that. But let's move on to our next topic. LeBron's teams are now 11-16 and 16 in NBA Finals, and, and that's including three series losses. Now, the big three 
They're now two and two in the final, Stephen A. So how did this loss affect LeBron's legacy, if at all, in your opinion? Well, uh, you're going to sit there and say it affected his legacy to some degree from the perspective that you are two and three in the finals, even though I don't count that first finals loss when he was in Cleveland going right. up against San Antonio. I'll give you that as far one. as I'm right. concerned, that he didn't, didn't have a team. Sure. You know, so to me, he, to me, I look at him as, as, as two and two. But what I will say is this. If you're the best player in the world, you can't completely escape culpability when the San Antonio Spurs go on a 50-20 to 20 run, okay? Somewhere along that road, you've got to be able to stop the bleeding to some degree. And he couldn't stop it. Sure. He couldn't stop it when they scored 12 straight after being down 22-6. to 6. He couldn't stop it when they went 33-13. and 13. He couldn't stop it when overall the run was 50-20. to 20. But at the same time, I'm not holding him to the same level of accountability as others will because we have to recognize he was going up against a superior team. And by the way, he didn't have all his horses. Dwayne Wade is going to have to get operated on this summer. Yep. There's no question about it. He's not healthy. Chris Bosh, that's a different ball game because he's got to sit there and continue to develop his game. I don't understand why he was so pedestrian during this series. The, the Miami Heat are actually older. People think the San Antonio Spurs are older. The Miami Heat actually Look, have yeah. an older yeah. team than the San Antonio Spurs. Their average age is 30. San Antonio is 29. So you have to take that into consideration. They don't have much of a bench. Outside of Ray Allen, who did you have? Udonis Haslam is older. Chris Birdman Anderson, he's limited, okay? You look at Mario Chalmers, obviously, you know, he ended up getting benched for this game because of the way he struggled in the first four games. You just look at a whole bunch of these. Greg Oden never materialized. That experiment was a bust. Michael Beasley couldn't figure out things defensively. And as a result, he wasn't even dressing for the finals until last night. So when you look at it from all of those standpoints, there's no way to get around the fact that LeBron James, it was almost one on five. Yeah. And so when you look at it from that perspective, I don't think it takes the hit that some other people would give it. I understand that you have to sit there and point the finger at him to some degree because he is the best player in the world. But at the same time, this wasn't Dallas where you're looking at the Miami Heat. They were evenly matched or they should have won the series. If you know the game of basketball and you watch the game of basketball, the San Antonio Spurs were incredibly superior to the Miami Heat. And even the greatest player in the world can overcome that. Okay, so when we talk about legacy, we're talking about 11 years worth now for LeBron James. We're talking about two and three in the NBA Finals. I give you the pass that you gave him for the first one right. against these Spurs younger. Sure, so two and two. Two and two. I'll let's let's it was two and three, but two and two, I'll give right. you that. Okay. Now, there was the meltdown against Dallas, and, and I don't think that gets expunged off his legacy just because he broke through and finally won one ring. I agree. Then we had the Ray Allen shot, don't get me started last year. It did save LeBron's legacy. It took him off the hook for a very shaky end to game six last year. Okay. You and I disagree about this because obviously LeBron played a great game seven. And I give you that, but he would not have had a game seven unless Ray Allen nails that corner three, which was one of the great clutch shots I have ever witnessed. So now let's look at what just transpired in these finals. LeBron had cramps to start the game one. I, just for, for a superstar... You, you have to figure out how to avoid cramps in game one of the NBA Finals because I can't remember any other great player who had cramps in the finals. I just can't remember it. You have to figure out how to maneuver around your cramps. It's not fair, but go ahead. Okay? But, but I'm, look, I'm putting this in the big picture of a guy who wasn't there when his team really needed him. They really needed him in game two, and he was all-time sensational because this is a supremely gifted player. And all the way through last night, I was scared to death of LeBron James. I'll, I'll put that out there publicly. But then game three, when his team really, really needed him, he got off to the sensational start, you recall, in game three. Then he went strangely quiet and passive the last three quarters of that game, scored only eight points with seven turnovers in the last three quarters. And I'm thinking, where are you, LeBron? Game four, which is pivotal, you, this is basically do or die, at home, your house. The whole first half, strangely quiet and passive. I couldn't figure it out. I'm thinking, thank well, you, LeBron James. Well, first of all, okay. you, there's a couple of things that you're missing, all right? Number one, 
you can't mention his cramps mm. without mentioning the fact that the AC broke and it was a hundred and dang two degrees. Did, 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 did anybody else cramp? Yes, Come out. Nobody else cramped. Come out. Come Nobody out. else cramped. I'm going to tell y'all this right now. I'm going to tell y'all this right now. The, understand something. If the San Antonio Spurs had stomped on a team tantamount to the Cleveland Cavaliers from years ago, you wouldn't be sitting here celebrating the way you're celebrating because it wouldn't mean that much. It means that much because you beat the best player in the world. Respect it. The point that I'm trying to make to you is that it's not a joke. Nobody's making excuses here. But the fact of the matter is is that it's not like the dude hasn't suffered from cramps before. Now, if you have normal conditions and then all of a sudden, all right, it, it's not there, then that can throw you that can throw you for a loop. That's what happened in game one. When you look at what the rest of this team was doing, you can't sit here and, and, and stick your chest out and bloviate about the greatness of the San Antonio Spurs and to forget about that when it's time to criticize the best player in the world. What did Greg Popovich do? He took Kawhi Leonard, 22 years of age, 6'8", incredibly athletic, exceptional defensively. Not only did he put him on LeBron James, but he had him backed up by Tim Duncan and Tiago Splitter, who's no scrub on the defensive end of the floor. So if you've got two seven-footers on your front line backing you up, and at the same time, you're 6'8", and an elite defender in your own right, and you're going up against LeBron James, well, then that's going to limit him, especially when he's throwing the ball to other people and nobody can make a damn shot. Right. So let's not act like let's not act like this dude all of a sudden sat up there, sold out, didn't show up or whatever the case may be. That wasn't the case. He lost to a better okay. team. Last night. Sensational start for the Miami Heat. Second quarter, where was LeBron James after he told his team, follow my lead? Right. He scored three points in the second quarter. That's right. And three what happened? Come out, come out, come out, come out. The NBA, there isn't a game alive that isn't a game of runs. That's when San Antonio made their run. So what? The point is, in the aftermath of all of that, what transpired? What transpired was Greg Popovich going to work, and recognize it, LeBron had little to no help. Because if you're Dwayne Wade and you don't have any lift on those knees, you can't go inside, not against Tim Duncan and Tiago mm -hmm. Smith. You can't pull that off. If you're Chris Bosh and basically you're a perimeter shooter, what are you going to do? Well, you going to give me Ray Allen? Now, Ray Allen shot one for eight. Now, that was a struggle because we didn't anticipate that. Where else can you turn? Mario Chalmers couldn't make shots. Norris Cole couldn't make okay. shots. Here's Ray Allen couldn't line. make shots. I, I hear what you're saying. What do you want to do? Big picture, LeBron James, he lacks all-time great intangibles. He's got all-time great talent, but when it is time to show killer will, I don't see killer will. I didn't see killer will last night, second quarter or third quarter. And I, I saw some quotes from your radio show on Friday, and you basically acknowledged his intangibles are lacking on, on the highest level. The Larry I said, Bird I said, magic. I said, I said, when you look at Jordan, he's in another stratosphere. When you look at Kobe and the kind of career he's had, mm -hmm. to me, he's in another stratosphere in terms of that killer instinct. Of course, Magic, Bird, Bird, no question about it. But what I'm saying to you is the man's been the five NBA finals. Mm -hmm. He's won two. Yeah. Okay. He's won two. Sure. And by the way, game seven does count for something. But do, do you realize it's how like much? You ignore, it's like you okay. ignore Game Seven because you feel no, there should you, not have been. I did not give him a standing ovation. But I'm saying you should not because you believe okay. there should not have been a Game uh, Seven. I don't think there should have been. And when he broke through to win his first ring, remember those games in Miami? Dwayne Wade, big game in sure. Game Three back home. Then Mario Chalmers had 25 in Game Four. Then Mike <laughs> Miller hit seven threes in the closeout Game Stan, Five. I saw a game in Chicago years ago when Jordan was playing when. Scott, you know, Stacey King and Scott Williams and people like that showed up because Jordan was struggling that particular game. I saw when Magic blew a game seven because he turned over the basketball on a multitude of occasions. Against saying, whom? Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, excuse me, who's LeBron was going against last night? Did you not just call the Spurs the best team, team yeah, I've, I've ever seen? seen. Yeah. So, so what do you say? So what do you say? Uh -huh. So, 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 so you asking me, you asking me the rhetorical question as who did, who was it against? Well, who was it against? Tim Duncan, manager. Okay, but you, you you picked Miami because you said they had the greatest player That's in the right. world. And, I, and, and so I'm saying, okay, I give you that. So show me greatest player, and sh he didn't show me. He didn't show it to you because the Spurs are that superior. Period. Period.
I saw that. Oh. Okay. I, I thought you, you I thought he alone was you got enough. It. We're at the Hard Rock Cafe. The fans are something special. Skip, don't encourage this. Don't encourage his behavior you're, as you giggle. You know what? He deserves a couple of those courses. Uh, he does a couple I, of those courses. you push for a bunch I, of those I, at the Cleveland I, I, or South. I, I, I'm not complaining. Yeah. I can take it. You I'm can not, take it. I'm not you. I can take it. Oh! oh, oh, oh shots I can fired take, already. I can take it. All right, listen. We welcome in our Brian Winhorse. You've been doing a great job. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, I read your article, and it was really interesting in speaking about LeBron and the Big Three. You said LeBron paid, played 400 more minutes than Bosch, 1,300 more minutes than Dwayne. And I ask you, as you look into his future, do you see him staying in Miami? Well, I think LeBron has got some decisions to make. But the biggest thing, I think, is that he's got to find another viable option. There may not be another viable option. The Heat may be his best choice. What I think he wants is what Tim Duncan has and Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker, which is a good supporting cast. Right and an opportunity to extend his championship window. And you do that by reducing your minutes. I think LeBron really felt the, the stress load this year, Dwayne Wade missing 28 games. It wasn't that Dwayne Wade missed 28 games. It was that they had nobody to play really at that position when Dwayne Wade missed all those games. And so during the course of the year, LeBron was really taxed more than he wanted to be. And as he looks into the future, the Heat have got to find a way to, to take some of the strain off him over the course of the season. And so they're going to have to spend some money. They're going to have to make some moves. And that's the plan that the Heat are going to, that the Heater, that LeBron's going to want to hear before he has, he has two weeks from uh, yesterday to decide on his opt-out clause. And um, it's a really big decision. Yeah. Um, and um, he is going to, I think, he's going to be the most powerful free agent potentially in NBA history because he's in, he's in the prime of his career. He would be unrestricted. And this is what's most important. He doesn't care as much about money. He's making all this money off the court. If he feels that there's another opportunity where, where it's not maximum money or that he doesn't, you know, I think it's a better chance to extend that championship window, he could look at it. But I, I, I don't think anybody should assume that it's not in Miami. I think even today the Heat are favorites to win the East next year. That's more of a commentary on the East than it is on yeah. on the Heat. But they, he's still, they're still in a good position, but they definitely have to turn over that roster. The Spurs were obviously the better team. Well, first of all, I think that depends. Um, I would tell you, based on what I've learned over the last several weeks, I believe LeBron wants to stay in Miami. I don't believe he wants to be perceived as a mercenary. I believe the only place that would be safe for him to go without a bevy of criticism is going back to Cleveland if he were to leave Miami. But at the same time, this year was incredibly taxing on him. And to me, the man that's on the clock is Pat Riley because you've got to wield your magic. You're going to have to convince dudes to take pay cuts, meaning Dwayne Wade. You're going to have to make sure whether it's surgery or anything else that you get that knee right. Uh, you're going to have to sit there and hope that Chris Bosh opts out and either will take less or leave. Because let me tell you something. You can talk about Miami being a favorite all you want to. Hypothetically speaking, and it's strictly a hypothetical. I'm sorry. What if Carmelo Anthony leaves New York and doesn't come to Miami but decides to go to Chicago and Derrick Rose is healthy? I'm sorry. Miami is not the favorite then. Miami's not the favorite. I can promise you that. I don't because, know. They, uh, they might be the odds-maker's no, no, favorite. No, 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 might, I'm, might not be what, your favorite. No, what I'm saying is, is that when you look at the health of Dwayne Wade and the team being as old as it is, if they all elected to opt in, then it strips your ability to do anything, manu you know, in terms of maneuvering cap space for yourself to go out and get different players. So as a result of that, you'd have to come back essentially standing pat. And this team, as presently constructed, would not be the team with Carmelo and Derrick Rose and those guys he, in Chicago. Here's the problem, Stephen. A. This free agent class is, is not great. Mm -hmm. I mean, after Carmelo, if, you know, if, you, if you're Dwayne Wade and I'm Pat Riley and I'm coming to you and I'm saying, all right, you're taking a pay cut. Okay, I'll take a pay cut for Carmelo. Then who? Yeah. I mean, Dwayne Wade is not taking a pay cut so they can afford Trevor Ariza. Well, right? no, 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 I understand that. But you know, what I'm saying to you is this. Carmelo would come to Miami if Miami had the money to bring him to play with LeBron because he wants to play with LeBron. All I'm saying to you is that if you're talking about Carmelo and LeBron, because Carmelo, you got to understand something about Carmelo, and this is what people don't realize. Carmelo's a big, strong dude. People underestimate that. They see him slaying people with those jump shots and quick dribble. Carmelo is 6'8", 240, and strong. And, oh, by the way, the kind of injuries he's had is nothing compared to the, what a Dwayne Wade has. 
Carmelo has the kind of game that you can look at and say, well, he can do that for the next three or four years. And, and that's the difference. Yeah. And he can get LeBron's minutes down. That's you know? right. That's I think they can play big deal. similar positions. Which is, what, which is also something that LeBron is thinking about. So I'm not saying that anything definitive is going to happen because I don't think LeBron James knows at this particular moment in time. What but I do do? think that he has put the Miami Heat on notice that he is not – happy with this particular situation that it is not ideal and that if you want me to stay you had better do something about the present state of affairs because I'm not going to let the best years of my career wither away because I have to carry the load I'm carrying. Here's something else. LeBron's a little bit upset at the Heat organization right now yes, because there were three opportunities this year to add pieces to this bench. They had their mid-level exception over the summer which they did not use for money reasons. Mike Miller, they could have kept. Mike Miller ended up playing 82 games and all playoff games this year for the Grizzlies. They cut him for money reasons. I mean, that move alone saved them $15 right. million dollars yep. in tax. But go, go try to explain to LeBron about $15 million in tax. He doesn't care. He sees the building full every night. And then third, they made a trade midseason where they moved Joel Anthony in a first-round pick just to get off the money. They, they, they didn't use that to bring in a player. So here's LeBron sitting there on the bench last night looking at his team being eviscerated, and he's thinking, we had three opportunities to bring in help this year, and they didn't do it. And so um, I think that's going to be something he, when he addresses Mickey Harrison, hey, you've got to open up that checkbook one way or the other. It's not just the players to take less. You've got to spend more. Yeah, exactly, because, see, the key thing there is that he's tight with D-Wade, and he understands that D-Wade ain't what he used to be in terms of his health, and he's got to get the health in order. But it's pretty. Di that's another reason why D Wade is going to be difficult because D Wade is going to sit there and be one of those individuals that's saying, "You're going to come to me to take a pay cut after all I've done for this organization." But more importantly, what you did to cut corners. Now, Mickey Harris's response could easily be, "I didn't give one of you nine figures. I gave three of you nine figures. Right. I mean, cut me some slack as the owner. Three of y'all are making over 107 million dollars. So don't call me here. cheap." Yeah. Well, well Brian, go yeah. Ahead. Go ahead. I, I think. Um, the biggest thing here is if somebody wants LeBron, other than the Heat, because the Heat are sitting there in pole position, they've got to move some chips, but they've got him. they got to do something in the next two weeks. you got two weeks till June 29th. Right. That means around the draft, Kevin Love, go get him. You know, you know, wow. you know, do something like that. That's huge. Go get Kevin Love I, I think, just like that? I, well, I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm just saying, if you want LeBron, you know, okay. for the Chicago do Bulls, for drastic. example. Yeah. Chicago Bulls, as you know, have the assets to trade for Kevin Love. You want LeBron? Trade for Kevin Love. If you're the Cleveland Cavaliers and you want LeBron, no, you trade for Kevin Love. I'm not saying they can. I'm saying that's the well, kind let of me, move Well, let say. me say this to you. The reason why Kevin Love is interesting is because no matter how much Flip Saunders smiles in everybody's face, and I like Flip and worked here, okay, no matter how much he smiles in everybody's face, he don't like Kevin Love. Those guys in that locker room don't like Kevin Love. I like Kevin Love. But those guys in that locker room says he's quick to point fingers, he's quick to point the finger of blame in somebody else's direction and not accept accountability. So the reason why that makes it very, very interesting is because even though I don't know if they'll do it, because of the money that Chris Bosh is making, you know, he's got the opt out or whatever because or the, or he can opt in or he can opt out. It's up a lot of it would depend on Chris Bosh. But could I see Minnesota possibly doing a deal like that? Just to get rid of Kevin Love, you never know, because they're not happy with him. They're also, him. whoever might hire Mark Jackson, if I mean, LeBron is very happy with Eric Spolster. I want to make right. that clear. Yes. But if there's a coaching free agent that LeBron would like to play for, it's, yes. Mark. it's, it's Mark, Mark Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. So if you see Mark Jackson get hired somewhere, there okay, might be but, something but else going on. Didn't you suggest that LeBron is blaming Spolster for playing too many minutes? Because to, to me, from a distance, it looks like LeBron just plays when LeBron wants to play. So shouldn't he blame himself for playing too many minutes? Well, that's sort of a dichotomy that LeBron has. Yeah. You're right, Skip. So, you know, sometimes he says, "Hey, I'm really tired right now," yeah. but then try to pull him out of the game in the yeah. third yeah, quarter. And he won't right. come out. No, no, I agree. It's okay. definitely. But, but you know what? He doesn't. He doesn't. He's not deciding in free agency in the third quarter no. of a game in, in February. He's deciding free agency now, and now he's tired. So okay. that's going to be important. Give us your insight into Dwayne Wade. I'm a big fan of Dwayne's. I, I thought he was really good against Indiana in the previous round in the Eastern Conference Finals. I saw flashes of flash in games one and two here in San Antonio in the finals. And then I'm not sure what happened to Dwayne. He got off to a nice start last night, then he fades, just as he faded in games three and four, obviously, in Miami. What, what, what's your view of what happened to Dwayne in three, four, and five? Okay, I'm not a doctor. I've spent some time talking to, to Tim Grover, who's the best in the business, Dwayne's trainer. 
But from what I can tell, my experience within the last four years, Dwayne's knees are never getting better. Mm. You know, it, it's an arthritic, it's an arthritic condition. Yeah. He doesn't have, he doesn't have cartilage in the one knee. And Dwayne gets worn down. And what really Dwayne needs to do is he needs to play three weeks and take two weeks off. Mm. And now when you're in the playoffs, I mean, I've seen it over and over. Uh, uh, you know, I'm telling you, if you went and got Dwayne Wade in two weeks from now, he'd look fantastic. Mm. And it just four rounds wears long. him out. Yeah. That's another reason why you need more on this roster to just ease the ease the load. You, you frankly, you can't count on Dwayne Wade to be there for four yeah, playoff yeah, rounds Dwayne anymore. Dwayne Wade's got a place to call to Kobe Bryant and find out who that surgeon is in Germany if he hasn't already. Yeah, I'm, I not, mean, sure, he, I'm he not sure got, it's going to matter. Exactly, and I'm not sure it's going to matter either, but yeah, I'm, just, was, talking about, I'm just talking about that, that you've, got, you've, got to try, you've got to try everything, and I'm glad you brought up the point about Mark Jackson because with all due respect, that just reminds me of how stupid Cleveland is, and here's why. Because LeBron would love to play for Mark Jackson. Again, that's no knock against Eric Spolster, sure. who he likes. But he's got, from what I hear, he's got a lot of love for Mark Jackson. You're the Cleveland Cavaliers, okay? You've got a top pick. You've got Kyrie Irving. You've got Deion Waiters and those boys. Some people would argue that the roster that they have right now, no matter how much they struggled, is better than the one LeBron took to the finals. And somehow, some way, at the beginning of last season, I told y'all, Miami was on the list. Cleveland was on the list. If you know this, you would think that they would do everything they could to position themselves, but instead they drafted Anthony Bennett, who, whose game we're still looking for, okay? And then you lose Mike Brown, you fire him, you fire the GM, you got a new young GM, you don't know what you're doing as the owner. I mean, this is the kind of idiocy that should be called out. And because if you got a shot to get a LeBron James, again, You've got to maximize that opportunity, even if you don't pull it off, in my opinion. Well, the Cavs, you know, really are the Cavs much less talented than, say, the Washington Wizards? No. I mean, you know, you go player by player, it's comparable. The Wizards got to the second round. Had the Cavs gotten to the second round this year, mm -hmm. now they wouldn't have the number one pick. But if the Cavs had gotten to the second round this year, they'd at least have something to sell to him. But That's right. Stephen A. I, I, I can't let you get away with saying this one more time. It's not like this was the Cleveland Heat. The Heat are still favored to win it all next year, and they came into this finals just, as an even Stephen pick with because, the Spurs. Because you're interpreting it as I'm talking about their game. I'm talking about their health and their age. That's what I'm talking about. Well, well I'm Vegas is saying they're going to be pretty good next year. Yeah, Vegas is saying that the East is pathetic, so the Heat will come out of it. That's what they're exactly. saying. Exactly. Don't confuse what Vegas is saying. Now, when it comes to San Antonio, you're looking at the West and saying, look at this conference. They're elite, and the Spurs are the elite team in the elite conference. In the case of the Miami Heat, one would argue they would, they, 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 they're here by default because the East was that putrid. Hey, but as is, the Heat are favored to win the NBA championship next year. Yeah, they are. Five as is, not the Eastern I'll tell you Conference. What, though. I'll are. tell you what, though. If I'm the Heat, I don't see the Spurs going anywhere. I'm worried about trying to beat them next year. Uh, well, I, you know. Did you hear that? Welcome back to the Riverwalk. Hard Rock Cafe. First take on the road for the NBA Finals. It has been crowned. The Spurs with their fifth title in the last 16 years. Congratulations, San Antonio. Would you like to speak with the ma mayor? Do you have something to say before we get our topic started? This is all music to my ears. It's just music yeah. to your ears. Is it, is it sir? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. We really, really appreciate it. So let's talk about next season. Again, as just mentioned, this is your fifth title in over 16 years. The odds makers are already predicting for next season. They say Miami has a 5-2 chance to take it all, followed by the Thunder, 7-1. And then the Spurs, 7-1. So here's the question, Mr. Bayless. Should the Spurs be favored to win next year? Clear your throat so they can hear you. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith, you can feel free to accuse me of being a prisoner of a beautiful morning oh, here, a beautiful moment on this morning. Yes, yes. I'm already ready to go out on a limb. I say the San Antonio Spurs are going to win their sixth title next year. Wow. Stephen A., the harder I look at this roster, the more I think the Spurs should be favored to win it all next year. Tim Duncan all but said he is coming back last night. And again, 
I don't think he's ever protected the rim any better than he protected it in these NBA Finals. I said for the last three months, Manu Ginobili is playing five years younger than he was at this time last year, and I see no reason to doubt that he can't play that young next year. He made so many big plays and so many big shots even in these finals. Remember, Tony Parker last offseason led France to the Eurobasket Championship, took a lot out of his body. He was nicked up all season long because of no offseason last year. He will have an offseason of rest this time going into next year. Two key unrestricted free agents, Boris Diaw, who was key to this finals, yeah. and Patty Mills. I believe that they so love being a spur and playing for Greg Popovich that they will figure a way to get those two guys back in the fold. Two key pieces. And if they can figure that out, maybe it has to they'll lose Matt Bonner. God bless Matt. He's been a great spur. I assume he won't be back next year. But, again, I think that R.C. Buford can finagle this roster around a now, you know, a 22-year-old Kawhi Leonard who will only get better next year. I can see no reason why the Spurs shouldn't be favored to not only win the, the better West, but to win the NBA championship. Sure. Stick with the prediction. Six titles. All right, back to back. I'm not going to disagree with you, but I'm not going to go as far as you went. I definitely think that the Spurs should be the favorites, but I think that you need to monitor two situations, the unrestricted status of both Boris Diaw and Patty Mills. You have to look at that and also look at the, 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 the tree that San Antonio has created in terms of its tentacles, its branches, Budenholzer in Atlanta, Brown in Philadelphia, a guy like Patty Mills that's, that's, that's really shined in the Spurs system. You know, at some point in time, you've got to get your money too. And the Spurs may not have it to give, but those two, which are extensions of San Antonio's pedigree, Budenholzer yep. was in attendance last night. I'm not sure Brown was, but you've got to believe that they're going to come. One of them are going to come for a Patty Mills. If you lose a Patty Mills, then all of a sudden the priority is to get a backup for Tony Parker because Tony Parker, even when he hasn't had, you know, uh, participation in, in, in EuroLeague play or whatever the case may be, you know, he does get nip, nicked up a little bit. Um, he hasn't been 100%. And there are times where, like you say, dribble, 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 dribble. That's Tony Parker. And so you're going to need something else. So even though I think that the San Antonio Spurs should be the favorites, I don't anticipate that Manu Ginobili is going to look as good next year as he did this year. Mm -hmm. I don't think he'll look any better at this age than he did this year. You just mm -hmm. called him out again. No, you're, you're going to pay Manu. for that. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not calling him out. I'm in no position to call Manu Ginobili out. He was fantastic throughout these playoffs. I'm simply saying that he's older. For all the time, he is undefeated. undefeated. And so when I look at him and I look at Tim Duncan, they're playing at an elite level. Even if they took a step back, it would still be good enough. I'm simply saying that what you saw, you shouldn't anticipate that you're going to see it to this level again next year. Oklahoma City, I'm not sold on them because they need an interior presence offensively. And, and the Clippers, DeAndre Jordan's got to learn how to hit free throws. Yep. Uh, but, but outside of that, I look at the East, and again, I think there are going to be a lot of questions, and I don't know what type of team Miami is going to have. So I'm not going with them as the favorites. I think San Antonio should be the favorites. I'm just not sure if they're going to win it all. i got to wait to see how the offseason unfolds. When I think of Patty Mills, I'm reminded of what J.J. Barea did after he was so pivotal to the Dallas win over these Heat. Remember in uh, 2011? Yeah. He left. He got his big deal to go to Minnesota. I wonder, does he look back and regret that at all? Maybe he wasn't that happy playing for the Mavericks. Patty Mills loves it here. He loves these people, and they love him. So there's got to be some home, some hometown discount, a little bit. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying there's no hometown discount. There's something to be said for being happy. Where you're at, who you work with, going to work every day, that's important. But you keep, you have to remember that there's a short window of opportunity yeah. for a professional athlete to make their money. their money. And it's one thing for Tim Duncan to sit there and say, well, you know what, I'm going to make my $10.4 million. I'll exercise my player option. It's no big deal because he's made a lot of money over his career. The man of Ginobili's and Tony Parker's, same thing, even though they take a discount. A guy like Patty Mills, 
You're basically a role player that shined in a big moment. There's one opportunity for you to get your money, and it will never be better than it is today. He's got to get paid. So let's be, let's keep that in mind and just just put that in perspective. Are you rooting for Patty to leave? No. Uh, he didn't, no. you, 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 he didn't you, say you, you that. Keep, you keep reaching. I'm Mayor. sorry. You know, you, what's pathetic about you reaching so much is that you really don't need to. You got all your you people around you. And you still reach. You got Thank your backup. You. You, you got your backup. You. still reach. Okay, 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 okay. It's the only it. place it. it's the only place okay. in America he'll hear his chant. Yes, Let him out. His first the 2014 champion. We're making sure we see that. We have one champion with us. He'll bring the city a trip in 1999. Spurs commentator, NBA champion, Sean Elliott is here. Give it up for Sean Elliott, everybody. Give it up for Sean Elliott. You're actually playing a little ball with the people. You, yeah, the just crowd a little bit. You. A little bit. I don't have it. I don't have it though. Okay. Listen, it's gone. It's long gone. It's, it's long gone. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about last night and what's not long gone. Your Spurs actually yeah. beat every single game. 14 points per game. They beat the Miami Heat, the largest yeah. point differential in finals history. Yeah. And everybody was contributing. But let's talk about one key player who got the MVP, Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. He's a, stud, he's, he's a superstar now. I mean, what can you say about him? Uh, he joins, uh, you know, the elite players in this league. And, you know, he's finally getting his due. He's show, he showed everybody last night in the last three games what we all saw this year. He's a superb defender. I said it. He's the best perimeter defender in this league. I've brought it up numerous times at coaches' dinners, and I've made one point, which I want everybody to understand. In this league, if you score more, you get more recognition for other stuff that you do. Kawhi Leonard put the ball in the basket, so now everybody recognizes what type of player he is, and he's a terrific defender. He is as good a defender as I've ever seen on the perimeter. He was in LeBron all night long, and he was, he was disruptive. There were times where LeBron looked at him like, what, you know? Yeah, where you at? What, who, who are you? What are you doing? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, no, Kawhi Leonard was the right choice because of everything he does. And you know what? He does so many things on the defensive end of the floor that the common fan or maybe the media doesn't recognize. They don't see. They don't have that trained eye. There's times he's guarding LeBron James at the top of the key, Ray Allen or Chris Bosh. Those guys are making curl cuts. He's able to come off, disrupt that play, and still get back to LeBron James. He takes away almost an entire side of the floor, and we've seen it all year long. Well, he was my MVP. You asked me uh, before Game Five who would be the MVP, and I said Kawhi Leonard because, but well, mainly because of this reason. Game Three was when everything changed. Mm -hmm. It was when you saw something. You said, "Uh oh, Miami ain't gonna be able to overcome this." And it was because Kawhi Leonard had stepped up when you saw Popovich punching him in the chest, like, right. "Way to go!" You know, because you saw that Kawhi Leonard just upped his game to another level. He's only averaging seven points in the first two games. Was relatively anemic offensively. Uh, seemed a bit befuddled defensively in game two. And then came out like a monster and just and just performed in game three and changed the complexion of this series. It was like, even though you knew that the San Antonio Spurs were a complete team, you needed something to elevate you. And he exactly. was that spark plug. Mm -hmm. yeah, it yeah. started with him. Sean, I hear what you're saying about Kawhi, and I'm, I'm down with the MVP, but part of me, maybe part of my heart, wanted to see Tim Duncan at least get a share of that MVP. Yeah. He was sensational protecting the rim in this series. Yes, he and was. And Kawhi was not sensational in games one and two here. Obviously, he struggled. So when I look at the body of five-game work, the leader of this team, the guy who made LeBron miss a lot of little shots at the rim sure. was Tim Duncan, who was yeah. playing at a high level. Right? I mean, yeah, for nice. five games, Tim Duncan, remember, he starts off making 9 to 10 in that first game. He was yeah. at 21 and 10. That's a great argument. I, you, yeah. know, like, you know, it's just, you know, who do you, who do you take? You're exactly right. I mean, Timmy was dominant the entire series. And your guy just continues to amaze me. He's been around since, what, like the Jurassic period. <laughs> like George Mikan was Timmy's rookie, you know. Ooh, so, good you know, shot. He's, he's been around yeah. so long. Yeah. And, and every year it seems like, you know, you, you figure, does he have anything left in the tank? And then he comes out and he plays the way he played last night. But he played that way all year long, Skip. You know, you watch the games. He got more below the rim blocks than I could even uh, point right. at or count right. this year. And so, you know, he's got terrific timing. He's committed to playing defense. He did a terrific job anchoring uh, the, the ball club, keeping everybody under control. So, yeah, I hear your argument. I just, you know, I'm 
I love Kawhi Leonard so sure. much. I'm yeah. partial towards small forwards. Yeah, well, that, that's fair. So speaking of Tim, he, he all but said last night he's going to play again next year. Yeah. You, you think that way? You, are you Absolutely. That I, way? I, I don't see any reason why he yeah. shouldn't play. Uh, you know, like you said, he could have easily been the, the finals MVP. Why are you going to hang it up now? He's got a lot left in the tank. He's got a guard's mentality and a big man's body. You give him two or three weeks right now to take off, and I bet you you go to the practice facility and he'll be there. He'll be running. He'll be lifting. He'll be doing everything, shooting, whatever he has to do, getting ready for next year. And Manu Ginobili will be the same way. So, you know, I, I look at our well, guys next year, and we're going to be we're going to be we could be right back here again next year. I agree. I agree. Matter of fact, agree, we're, we're going to be, even, we're gonna be I, even better. I, I, think, agree with you know. y'all, I agree with y'all on Tim Duncan, but to me, y'all are missing the biggest reason why. Tim Duncan can afford to stay because the great Greg Popovich has done a masterful job protecting him. That's exactly you know, right. You, That's when, exactly you, right. When, you, when you average, listen, they didn't have a single player average more than 30 minutes. Greg Popovich protected them. Yes. If I'm Tim Duncan, mm-hmm. all right. If I slow down a little bit, well, maybe I'll average 20 or 25. Greg Popovich will figure out a way to keep Tim Duncan useful. Not just Tim Duncan will do it, but Greg Popovich will help him do it. And so when you have somebody that's going to protect you while maximizing the gifts that you have to bring to the table, then you could stay around for a very, very long time. Well, that, that's why our bench is so critical and they're so vital because they take so much pressure off Tony and Manu and Tim. They don't have to play a lot of minutes because our bench, all year long, they broke games wide open. In the fourth quarter, Timmy, Tony, and Manu were sitting there relaxing and not playing those minutes. You know, <clears throat> I looked up one time last night. I said, has LeBron even come out of the game? I mean, he's out there trying to do everything. Pop has done a terrific job managing his players. He's the best in the league at managing minutes, getting his guys rest, and he protects players from themselves. He's interested in the in the long term and preserving his guys, their their careers, and having them ready when it when it when it matters. Not playing a guy 35, 40 minutes right. during the regular but season. But that's exactly why you can say, see when you want to when you want to watch a team and you want to see where guys' heads are at. You know, when you look at a LeBron James in the press conference, it wasn't just that you lost. It was what you went through to, to ultimately yeah. ended up, end up losing. Tim Duncan and those guys lost last year in the NBA Finals. They were slapping themselves. They couldn't look anywhere else because they knew they were put in the best position to win. It was a play here or a play there. They knew their minutes were monitored. They knew their bodies were ready. They knew that they weren't uh, they weren't exhausted. If you're LeBron James, you're not looking at just the fact that you lost in the NBA Finals. You're looking at all the work you put in and all mm-hmm. you went through to come up short, the minutes that you had to play, who you had to sub for, the way that you were pushed to the limit. And that's not to knock Eric Spolstra or Pat Riley or whatever. You did. Deal with the hand you deal with the hand that you dealt. You mm-hmm. play the cards that you have, but it says a lot when you see a guy up there looking at you like I don't know what I'm gonna do. That speaks to frustration because mm-hmm. you are not happy, not just at the results, but what you had to endure. Well, you have to figure. You know, you, you work as hard as he worked all year long. He's got to be a little tired, yes. and it's gonna wear you down. No one can do that. No one can play that type of min- those types of minutes throughout you know, year after year after year without getting exhausted and throw in the Olympics and all the international ball that he's going to play, he's going to get worn down. And he's got to find a situation where he doesn't have to play 35 to 40 minutes. He doesn't have to carry the load the entire night. There's a few guys that could deal with the skill set of Kawhi Leonard. What you can't deal with is the combination of the skill set and the youth. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, a, it's something to be said for them young legs. He's they, a beast. They'll get caught and keep he's coming, right? So, Sean, give us a little step-back perspective here. I had several coaches, ex-NBA coaches, Mm -hmm. tell me before this series they were rooting like mad for the Spurs because of the statement the Spurs could make in the big picture, team versus individual superstar. Mm -hmm. Put that in in your perspective Oh, I think you hit it on the head. I mean, I I talked to all the other announcers. I talked to assistant coaches. I talked to head coaches around this league. They all say the same thing. They say, we love watching you guys play Mm -hmm. and our we wish that our kids would play the same way. We want our guys to watch you. And so it is huge for the for the game. This is this is a great victory for the league because right. it shows the common fan and you know and people who are purists how the game is Hold supposed it. to be played. You, but you know how what, the game you, is supposed you know to be what, played, not one on one, not isolation plays yeah. to death. 
You oh, move oh, it. Oh, oh, Vince from you... the former Pac-10 Player of the Year and the Wooden <laughs> Award winner. I, I shared it, though. A big I time. Shared, I shared it. Big I time shared ball. the ball. I'm sorry. I shared it. But that you're exactly right. Yeah. It's, it's huge for the league <laughs> because and, and, you know it's it's great for the fan base because you have a lot of young up and coming uh, you players. Can, can. You have a lot of young fans that are tuning in to watch LeBron and Wade, right. mm -hmm. and they see a true team and yes. they they see the way right. the game is supposed to be played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but see, this is the problem <laughs> that I have with this. You would never appreciate the San Antonio Spurs if there wasn't. Do you know the, the 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 pariahs, the evil empire? Like I'm a diehard Yankee fan. I know people hate the Yankees. That's what I love. What I'm saying to you is so that we need a you villain. would never you you would never appreciate the greatness of this. All of these coaches, they don't give a damn about the fans. They if they act like they would coach in an empty stadium. They're liars. You know you want the arena packed. You want it filled. You want people going crazy. And they're not coming for the Spurs if there's no evil. Like like they like the. I'm not saying LeBron is evil, but I'm just talking about superstars a that villain. are assembled a sure. different way. You'd have a problem with it. You want both. You want the guy, you want the San Antonio Spurs, but you also want the Miami Heat, the New York Yankees. That's what makes you rule. It makes you pick a side. If the San Antonio Spurs, there was a bunch of San Antonio Spurs around, we'd all be like this. Yeah, it was, it's all right. <laughs> Man, uh, versus nice watch. ball. Sean Elliott says Please. it's serious basketball, and they enjoy it. Thanks for joining right, us. We pleasure. appreciate it. Give it up for Sean Elliott, everyone. It's the fifth title for the San Antonio Spurs, and the people have been celebrating all night. Among them... Just maybe 15, 20 minutes of sleep straight from the party bus. No, not really. Uh, give it up for your NBA champion, Danny Green, ladies and gentlemen. That's huge. This is huge. Um, we really appreciate you being here. Oh, and, thanks for having me, man. And, and I mean, obviously, you're a friend of the show. You were here for the, uh, you know, All-Star Weekend. And we wanted to show you one of the headlines, okay? Take okay. a look at this one. San Antonio Express News. It says, Redemption. Uh, not bad. Give him five. That's not bad. <laughs> With Timmy, Timmy on the front. He's now, the man. let's talk a little bit about last year and progress to this mm -hmm. year. You were very candid on the show when you came on earlier this year, and you said it was a very tough finals for you last yeah. season, a very tough off season. You had to redeem yourself, redemption. Uh, how tough was this season in finally getting to this point for you? Uh, it was a long year, especially for me um, individu individually. I'm um, sure Pop could tell you, um, but it was a lot of ups and downs, long, you know, a roller coaster. But um, it, it's a big relief, you know, to get to this point and to accomplish what we've been working for all season. Um, but last time I was on the show, you know, you guys were talking about the loss and you know, how badly some of those, those guys played. But um, you know, Manu Ginobili last night, he, he looked pretty good. I, mean, I don't know what y'all think, but I think he looked pretty good. Yeah, uh, and, uh, I think he looked and, okay. And Timmy, Timmy, <laughs> he was fantastic throughout the playoffs. He was, he was. Timmy, Timmy played pretty well too. So. Um, it was good to see those guys play well and, and you know, to, to perform that well on that stage. And, you know, hopefully I can get them to come back again and we can do another, do another year. Okay. Yeah. Danny, it, it, is, it is shocking to me that Greg Popovich, day one of training camp, said, let's look at this tape of game six. Mm -hmm. And he made you go backwards instead of forwards. Mm -hmm. He was hard on you that day. Yeah. And Hard on everybody. Of course. And it, it broke tradition for him to say, let's make this year about erasing last year. Mm -hmm. And it worked. Explain how it worked. Did it drive you all year to get back to, to here? Definitely, definitely. Um, you know, we were constantly reminded of last year. And, um, you know, the only way to get that taste or that feeling out of our heads or, you know, out of our bodies was, you know, to continue to perform better and give ourselves the opportunity to get back to that point. So, you know, throughout the off season, you know, pretty much depressing, depressing off season, you know, talking about it all throughout the whole year, the media, everything, mm -hmm. talk, talking about game six and game seven, obviously. So, you know, all year we had to hear about it, think about it, and Pop reminded us of it and preparing for, the, you know, the playoffs this year. You know, every game, he, you know, he didn't care too much about the regular season, but he cared about the playoffs. And every game that he prepared us for was for, you know, Miami Heat or playing in the finals and not making those mistakes in game six ever again. So, you know. You know, every day we, we, you know, we wanted to work to get to that point. And you know, lucky for us, we were healthy at this point, and you know, we're playing our best basketball. And we know we need to play perfect in order to be, you know, a great team like Miami. I got a two-part question. Number one, yeah. when you say you were constantly reminded of it, mm -hmm. by whom? Media, Was it Popovich? Pop, Pop for sure. Not as much as the media, obviously. You know, every time we do media, they talk about it. They ask us, you know, how do you feel about it? What do you think about it? 
Do you guys are constantly reminded, of, or do you guys think go back to Game Six and think about it? I mean, yeah, but but I'm asking because the impression was given at least earlier that Popovich brought it up to y'all the first day, yeah, and then after sure. that left it alone. I don't feel like he left it alone. I, mm. it, it wasn't left alone, <laughs> but um, it obviously wasn't brought to us every day, you know. But it's definitely something that throughout the year. He, he reminded us of it, you know. Remember what happened in, you, in this game. You have to be perfect. You got to make sure you're on top of your game doing this. We can't have any mistakes, especially in, in this series. Um, we don't want to give them any light or any confidence or momentum, you know, going forward. So we wanted to continue, you know, to, to be aggressive, um, you know, make plays, make things happen offensively, share the ball, work with each other, right. and try to be as perfect as possible because they're two-time defending champs and for a reason. They're, they're really good. So the only way to beat them was to, to be as perfect as we could be. The other thing that I kept saying to Skip all year is that I, you get the impression that unlike any other Popovich team, y'all didn't just want the title. You wanted Miami. Was I accurate in saying that? Uh, partly, yeah. Partly. I mean... It, it, it makes it it makes it that much sweeter that you know we got a chance to to play them again and redeem ourselves against the same team that beat us last year. So as you look back, as the games unfolded, you lose game two here. Uh -huh. What was the turning point? You have a good basketball mind. Uh -huh. Look back and say that that's where it all swung for in our favor. Um, on the road, um, in Miami, I felt like game three. You know, we kind of set the tone, jump coming out. Um, obviously that third quarter, they they kind of came back and made a run. But um, I think that game kind of set the tone for us and our, our whole mindset. In Game Four, we came out even better, even more focused, more you know, stronger, you know, mentally. And you know, said we set short-term goals. We want to make sure we win this quarter or win that quarter. And the goal was not to steal one; it was to win two. And uh, we did that. And we came home and gave ourselves opportunity to close out here. Danny, thank you for sticking around. Oh, uh, thanks I, for having me. I believe your your mayor, your unofficial mayor, has some questions for you. He is he has the key to the city. He is the man here. <laughs> thank you, Danny Green. I want to know what you saw in the eyes of the Miami Heat in games three and four. What as they struggled? What 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 did you see in their body language? Um, you know, obviously it changed throughout the game. Um, towards the end of the game, when we're up, you know, pretty big, you, you can tell that they kind of losing it, losing faith a little bit. Um, you know, they came out aggressive, you know, game four. Both games they came out aggressive, but game four especially. And, you know, last night's game, they came out very aggressive. Um, but we kind of used it against them, you know, got them in foul trouble a little bit. And, and once we get a, you know, pretty decent lead, you can see, you know, in their body language, things start to change. They start to, you know, give up a little bit. But we knew they were going to try to come back regardless of, of the score because you know, they're the two-time champions. They're not ever going to give up. You obviously guarded Dwayne quite a bit. What mm -hmm. did you see from him or feel from his body? Did you think he was struggling injury-wise? I think so a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell he wasn't his normal self, and um, it could be you know due to injuries, it could be due to health, it could be due to you know long seasons. You know they've done this four times in a row, yeah. Yeah. and you know this is my second time doing it. It's the longest. You know last year was the longest season I ever had in my life, and it was the hardest thing I've ever done. So I can't imagine doing it four times in a row. It would be nice, but mm -hmm. you know I couldn't imagine doing it four times in a row. I'm sure it wears on your body a lot. They've got. The Miami Heat is the favorites in Vegas to win the title next year. Uh -huh. Skip's got you guys as the favorites to win the title. Where do you see yourself? I mean, you're sitting here today as a mm -hmm. champion. Yes. Obviously, you're not even 24 Luckily. hours removed from winning a title. Uh -huh. But as you look at this San Antonio Spurs team moving forward, what do you see? Um, I see a lot of potential. Um, obviously, RC and Pop, they do a great job of bringing the right guys. And I'm sure they'll bring in, you know, bring Patty and Boris back, hopefully. Yeah. And, and hopefully we can keep Tim and Manu you know, around for another year. I think they can still play. And, and if they do, I think we have a chance. I think we have a chance of, uh, you know, doing some special things. What is your gut feeling on Patty and Boris staying? Do you have any insight into their uh, My gut mindset? feeling is that they'll stay. I think they like it here a good amount. And they, they have reason to. So... So, what, what was that party like last night? The, the, the Spurs are, are known as kind of a boring NBA team. It, it is. Was it a boring party last night? I, I had fun, man. I, Did you? I, yeah. 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 I said I almost didn't make it today, but you know, I couldn't say no to you guys. Got to, you know. Can you tell us about? We want to know about the party. Specific I, I, dancing yeah, on the table. Yeah. Hey, 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 give us a little I tell everything. Yeah, you don't have to get specific. Specific. It, it but was a generic. lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. That's all he's giving us. I saw, you know, Kawhi. I was with. I ended up, you know, guys. Some went their separate ways, but I ended up with Kawhi. I saw Marco. I uh, got a chance to you know hang out with them a little bit, and they had their their family and friends. So it was a good time.
It was a good time. So what, what do you see? So, so are, are you are you basically saying you think Tim and Manu will return next year? Um, I hope so. Um, I think I think they have some years on them. You know, Tim he's he's looking he's looking really healthy right now, and and Manu had a great year. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Manu was talking about it a year or two ago that his body wasn't holding up too well, and he, he looked like he was done. But after this year, he, he looked he looked really good. And I, you know, and Tim I just feel like he has nothing else to do, so he's probably going to continue to play some more. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk, oh, wait, you go ahead. Go? No, that's all right. Talk about the team aspect because mm-hmm. everyone's talking about how you guys genuinely seem to love one another. It's a selfless team. How do you create that chemistry? You know. <laughs> that going in it starts with you know pop it starts from the top on down um he he creates that he, he brings in the right group of not just players but people you know guys that are selfless that are a team and, and they're based on you know being a team and wanting to win you know on the same page so um you know obviously you know we've been together for a couple of years too that helps so you don't see that happen often usually it's in college we see some some teams together for three or four years win a national championship something like that but um nba usually guys come in and go out go get traded waves cut whatever it may be but for them to keep this group together for so many years or a couple of years you know it, it's it's amazing and we've had this group for a couple of years now so i i hate to bring this up but you didn't score last night no, I but, didn't. but if i have my guess i don't think it really deeply bothered you uh-huh. that you didn't score because you were hellacious on defense, disrupting, getting your hands on balls, right? I did, I did okay. I did okay. Um, but, but that's my job. My, my job, you know, Pop, he tells me from day one, defense first. You know, um, your job is to play defense. And I don't care how many threes you make or how many shots you make. You're here to, you know, be active defense, cause, cause havoc. And, um, you know, luckily for me, my teammates, you know, picked it up for me. I didn't score. I didn't make any shots. But, you know, Patty Mills came in, stepped up, played great. Uh, Boris has had a, a hell of a series. Oh. You know, Tiago Manu came in and, and looked like the, the young Manu. Right. You know, coming down the lane, he, you know, dunked it one time. I, shocked shocked yeah. me pretty. Well, when you, that, what were you thinking when you saw him dunk on Bosch? I, I didn't know what. To, I didn't realize. I tried to you know look. I had to look twice to see it was him. I wasn't sure. <laughs> if, <laughs> was that was that Manu? Were, were yeah. you in or out of the game at that point? I was out of the game. I was watching the okay. sign, but I, I jumped up and I, I got really excited and I had to double check that it was him. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a great play, but it was that Manu. felt like. A turning point in the the momentum. Oh, definitely, night. definitely. Yeah. When he when he you know dunked the ball and then he got the, the three pointer, yeah, it, right it, it changed the whole momentum of the game. That's when we started to get back into it. And then you know once we got a little rhythm, a little chemistry, and the crowd behind us, our crowd, our fans are amazing. So once we got them behind us, I don't have no, I don't have a question. Mm-hmm. Only thing that I can say is this: if Tim Duncan, here's what will determine whether Tim Duncan and Manu Ginobili stay. If they want to go out on top, mm-hmm. okay, if you got that kind of mentality. I watched Tim Duncan's interview with Michael Wilbon. I didn't see a guy that's ready to leave. I didn't either. I yeah. saw a guy that's ready to come back. Yep. And to me, to me, the way Manu looked, Manu has totally, totally made amends yeah. for how he struggled in last year's NBA Finals. And to me, he's earned the right to come back and to want to come back and to try yeah. to repeat yeah. as champion. Mm-hmm. If they come back, I, I think we have a chance. It'll, it'll be interesting. So we'll see how the Danny summer Green, goes. you are blessed to be a San Antonio I, I am. I am. From your mayor. I am. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your NBA champion, yeah. Danny Nobody Green. That Thank you so much. Oh, my, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. These fans are mighty, mighty tough on you, Stephen A. Oh, my. Listen, it has been a great time on the road. We've had a wonderful time covering the finals. Gentlemen, I'd like to get your final thoughts. Get Bayless you first. Take Lord it away. Yours. I want to thank my friend Stephen A. Smith for being such a good sport today here. I, I want I want to thank all of you all for coming out with no sleep today. And I want to say that I believe I will be sitting in the same seat one one year from today. We'll be back here celebrating again. And you'll be back in that seat. Thank you. A true politician. Uh, I believe he is official, not unofficial. Congratulations. Official, the mayor. Congratulations. Thank Skip you. Skip Bayless, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just say this. We want to thank you guys for being here. It means the world to us. We want to thank the Clevelander in Miami. We had a wonderful time. We really appreciate you. We'll leave you with our final take from being on the road. Once again, San Antonio, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I just want to say Spurs in six, oh, baby. Wow. Oh. There is a photo of you with him when he was up. When he was a little okay. boy. That's hilarious. You want to find out how to shoot 51%, come ask Ivy. Steven Jackson looks like he's in good enough shape to still play. <laughs> You're no scrub, otherwise you wouldn't be sitting next to me because I'm allergic to scrub. The mayor has brought out his constituents on South Beach. It's a lot of distraction here. Uh-oh. <laughs> you can prognosticate. Here's the deal, y'all. That's a great has word. Has anybody... I know it is a good That's word. That's a great word. It? That's right. I want to hear it in your next album. When you allow the emotions to get involved... I want to so, go sit next to you. I was mingling with some folks <laughs> that remember me when I was here. <laughs> Who is your son? on that. The, the, uh, the entertainer came on uh -huh. and educated the expert on Listen, basketball. This will be my seat next time. He's not as good as you as an actor, man. Oh, please. A little bit? Please. All right. I, I think I got a future in it, but I'm not nearly as talented. <laughs> oh, please. Just how stop many times it. Does that happen? <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Right. I've never experienced anything like this. I may never leave. Hey, Skip, your car just got towed. I want to let you know. Two you have yes. right. Oh, yeah. The mayor is presenting a key to the city for our Stephen so A. Smith. Yes. Someday, people will say, I knew Ty, Ryan, Chase, Dylan, when he was car racing in 38th place. Someday, people will say, he's on a roll, on fire. Someday, people will shake their heads and say, man, that kid sure did grow up fast. Names are made here. The Gardner Denver 200 at Road America. Saturday at 2.30 Eastern on ABC. Fired up by Johnsonville. Someday, people will say, I knew Ty, Ryan, Chase, Dylan. When he was car racing in 38th place. Someday, people will say, he's on a roll, on fire. Someday, people will shake their heads and say, man, that kid sure did grow up fast. Names are made here. The Gardner Denver 200 at Road America. Saturday at 2.30 Eastern on ABC. Fired up by Johnsonville.